everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Let's Play Magical Star Sign with me, Strawberry Egg. Last time we saw the Potts' special festival where they create new pot links. And today, I believe we're going, where are we going now? Back to the dwarves? Or, I'm actually not certain. <laughs> I'll figure it out, I suppose. I always feel a little sad once the festival ends. We won't be having another one for 200 more years, and that makes me sad. I'm thinking sad thoughts if you want to just dump myself right out here. I wonder what's inside me right now, anyway. I hope it's just a lot of rainwater. That's kind of a weird way for pots to put it. Okay, yes, now I remember. I do have to see that dwarf, the leader of the dwarves who's the best engineer in the galaxy or something like that. The festival is over and our town's peaceful once again. The second you see one of terracotta's pots, you see the quality craftsmanship. Don't you agree? You all look the same, so... I don't know. You look like pots of faces. I'll just talk to the ones outside. I won't bother going indoors. Can we see that little pot? She's so adorable. How do you have genders? It's not like you need it. Our new generation of pots are basically undergoing their basic training. See those pots full of rainwater? They're training right now, practicing their whole absorption strength. If you see one, just say hello. Two hundred more years until we have that much fun again. I just have to make sure I don't fall and break or anger someone and get broken before before then. That's pot's life. Ugh, I always do that. That's where new pot folk come from. In fact, that's where all of us come from. He just got back. He, he's the uh, head engineer, I suppose you call him. You call him. Anyway, he says to me, he says, any kids come by the Millennia Gummy, you let them through. So, eh, uh, is that you guys? Yep. Well, shave my beard and knit me a sweater. I'm glad you asked because I never have guessed to look at you. Oh, no, 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 you don't need to show me. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Nah, you go right in, kids. You wouldn't know, uh, you wouldn't know what to look at you, but your kids got some steel, am I right? develop all the amazing technology you see around here. That's the reason for the code of the beard. You ever betray our secret, you are banished from these halls forever. This is Condiment Tower. Only the most talented of dwarves ever get to work here. Ravigante. Apparently, these are all indeed condiments. Although I'm pretty sure I mentioned that at, uh, point, at some point. Never heard of Ravigante myself. Or the Ravigoat. I don't know. Hi, this is Condiment Tower, where the finest dwarvish engineers do their finest work. Place. Listen to the banging of hammers! Listen, listen, but not with your ears, listen with your heart, I say. Because that's the beating of Grenadine's hammer and his soul's doing the hammering. What a get it. Mussolini? They let you in? Weird. Normally they wouldn't let anyone but dwarves in. So I take it you're here to have your ship rebuilt, huh? No. Space dwarves! Yay! Dwarven inscription, work hard dwarves, use your muscles to climb, but gravity helps when going down. I guess I have to take the ladder. Fun. But we're not dwarves! We have to listen to that? I'm afraid of the boss, man. I can't relax. I don't even have time to hit the can. I gotta have to work a hundred times harder just to get all my work done. <sighs> I don't know why 
I complain, though. It's just work, am I right? I've got so much work right now, I don't even have time to ask for approval on all the stuff I'm doing. Everything I've got... Everything I've got sworn to bits. My axe, my pick, even my beard comb. I don't know why I complain about it, though. It's just work, am I right? Sensing a pattern. Hey. I've got so much work to do, there's no time to even blow my nose. I know it's filthy, but I have to let my nose run and get all crusty in my beard. I don't know why I complain about it, though. It's just work, am I right? If it's that much work, I... I don't know, I'd complain the authorities or something, but... I don't know. I guess you have your own society and your own authorities, then you only have to blame but yourself. We used to have a factory in the Land of Light. Bernadine and the rest of us. We left it be behind so that we could fulfill a dream. Not really my dream, exactly, but it was someone's dream, that's for sure. Grenadine's, I'm assuming. I don't know what it was, but it was important enough for Grenadine to risk his life for, so it's pretty big. I can't really wrap my head around it, but Grenadine was telling me that the universe is like an onion, right? So what he's telling you is that the whole universe is a big, sticky thing that makes you cry all the time. You know, 80 years back, I decided I'd run off and work for the great, for this great thinker, but now I kind of regret that decision. Yeah, depending on who you talk to, the, the universe could very well be like that. But your skills shine in a new era dawns. You know our staff of quality, hailing from Kahneman Tower, where the jack of all trades rebuilders. Dwarves not be us, nobody knows why, but that's all there is to it, right? Well, not to old Grenadine. I hear Grenadine's been working non-stop day and night trying to find out the answer to the riddle of the beard. So touching to see him get all fired up about this. Okay, I thought it was an engineer, not a philosopher. Or some bizarre sort of anthropologist. Grenadine's a genius! Know how I know? Because I have no clue at all what he's thinking! <laughs> uh, you know, not all geniuses work like that. And not everybody who works like that is a genius. We dwarves used to be smooth of cheek and absolutely hairless around the er, mouthy regions. One day a dwarf woke up with a full head of hair growing straight out of his chin. God, must have been terrified, I tell you. And imagine the other dwarves must have teased him. I mean, he alone of all the dwarves had a beard. But then, one by one, each dwarf woke up to find that he too had a full beard of his own. Who's laughing now, right? So it goes, spreading from dwarf to dwarf, planet to planet, even off to dwarves we ain't seen for generations. And now, whenever you go, dwarves got beards. Some folks say it's a curse for teasing the first beard, beardy dwarf, but me, I love my beard. That's an interesting folk tale. <laughs> okay. So the mystery of the beard and dwarves is solved. At least four magical star sign dwarves. Bernadine's waiting for you. Hurry up and go in. No, not you. I don't want to talk to you. Listen, I don't want to alarm you, but folks say that a lot of things are grenadine, and you don't well pay attention to them. Because honestly, about 90% of what they say are grenadine is nothing but slag. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I came here because I heard how amazing grenadine was. I had no idea he's so strange, though. I mean, have you talked to him? I'm about to... Is that the dwarf in question, or is that a... Yep, that's him. Of course, he looks so much different from the other dwarves, who are clones of each other. I've been expecting you. Someone told me some kids came into town with a mangy old fake beard. You know, I heard about some dwarves living out in Cassia. They were banished there, oh, six generations back, I'd say. I figure that's where they got it. Well then, now that you're here, I don't have much idea of where to start. Hmm. Oh, right, right, I've got it now. So where do you kids gotta get out to Nova, the light planet, to hunt down some guy named Kale, right? Well, let's see. What can I do to lend you a hand? That Millennium Gummy you have there is unique. Only one exists in each of the planets. You found the Fire Millennial Gummy. The vital ingredient in order to conduct the experiment Kraken left, Kraken left behind. Kraken? Fair warning, this is a long story. Sure you want to listen to it? Well, I hope my listeners do. A long time ago, there was an Arc Wizard named Kraken. He was a great man. You could almost talk him the father of magic. And he predicted the death of the sun. Well, that shouldn't happen for several billion years. Then again, this is not... This is far from reality, so what do I know how long suns and stars last in this world? 
He said the sun would die in the near future and the reborn and then re be reborn soon thereafter. Kraken said further that when the this happened, all creatures in the world would die and everything would be born anew. Okay, and one sticky to one solar system? That's a little bit much. He said the light planet held the secret to the revival of the sun. So Kraken went out of his way to make a device that could take him there. That would be the rocky stage. That'd be the rocky stage you found at the base of the world scene. But it won't ever bud, even budge, unless you exhort some considerable magic. So isn't there an easier way to get there, you ask? Well, guess what? There sure is. What I'm going to tell you... What I'm going to tell you... Why can't I read this? What I'm going to tell you has to do with how the whole solar system is put together. You understand? See, all the matter is made out of a few pure elements. Earth, fire, water, wind, and wood. Normally, according to classical... Classical, well, I don't know, science, quote-unquote, wood is made, I believe, of fire and earth. In fact, the reason why it turns burnt, wood burns to ash is because when you burn fire, it apparent, when you add fire to wood, all the fire disappears, leaving behind earth in the form of ash. Yes, this is really what the ancients believed back in the day. Of course, they have rocket ships in this world, but they still believe in the original elements. They don't believe in hydrogen. Well, maybe they believe in them, but they don't consider those elements. Hydrogen, helium, neon, and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm rambling. We continue. You want to go to the light planet, you have to transmute the elements of each planet and change their phase. That's where the millennial gummies come in. You have to take their power and change it. Use it to reach Nova. Crocken called this process etherealization. I found a book that Crocken had left behind. It contained his notes on the ethereization device, but it didn't contain any detailed schematics. Ah, I've wanted to make that thing for a long time, but nobody around here gets why I'm so obsessed with it. No one wants to help me, and more importantly, no one wants to collect the gummies I need. For that matter, I haven't found any er, volunteers for ethereization. If you want to go to Nova, you'll need to gather millennial gummies and bring them here to me. It's, my, it's the only way. Let's see, you ought to head to Cassia first. I hear Crockett used to run a magical academy of his own there. That was quite a bit of information. <laughs> so, we have to do all this to get to Nova so we can test some weird theory that involves reviving the sun. Well, I guess uh, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Oh, no, no, no. Ugh, I am so sorry, folks. Dinner is gonna repeat the whole bloody thing. Uh... <laughs> Maybe not, yes? Ah, I see now. Durr. Just call me an idiot, folks. Ship. 
pause here a moment, folks. I'm sure you don't care about these random encounters. Wait, is this the one that I never managed to? Yeah, this is the one I never did get at. Probably because I didn't have any sugar stars at the time. about an academy? Ah. Okay, let's see here. Is there any place convenient I can warp to? I, could, I can't remember how to get to that academy quite. Much. Okay, there we go. He's probably going to tell us where to get to, where we need to go. Oh, Strawberry! Welcome! This town is peaceful again, thanks to you and your friends. <clears throat> However, I've heard reports that someone is after the hidden treasure on the eastern island. It appears that Space Police have taken up positions on the other side of the sea. I only hope that it won't cause trouble for the locals. Not so promising. Oh, I remember you. Pirates? Asking the space police for help? Pfft. Not while I'm around, my friend. Here, let me handle it. After all, we do have a reputation to look after. Let's show those grunts what we can do. Oh, you again, Lord Persimmon. How did your voice sound again? I like the way you think. You show sure promise. Yes, tell me your plans. I am, after all, the highest disciple of his infamousness, Master Chard. Huh? Hey, Strawberry, care to help me out with a wee problem again? No. Aw, oh, come on, at least give me a chance. You're a cold one, my friend. Hurry along and give me that treasure, you sniveling invertebrate. Don't even speak to me until you bring me that treasure. Maybe I do have to help him out. Fine, what? All right, here's the situation. On an island east of here, there's a magic academy called Ambergil Ambergris Press Prep. The space police went racing out there after they heard the pirates had hidden some plunder there. Well, that's not quite the whole story, though, is it? See, the cops are going out there to take the treasure themselves. You can't let that happen. That treasure belongs to Cassia. So how about it? Let's say we join forces and get that treasure back. Well, if it's the gummy, I'm going to need to take it anyway. <laughs> right on. Now that we have a deal, let's set sail. I'll get that boat ready. Give me a holler when you're ready. I've got to save, but I don't think I'm going to get Special to do. Let me just pause here a moment, folks. Okay, let's go. You there! Are you preparing to sail? I'm coming with you. I am the grand disciple of his eliteness, Master Chard. That doesn't sound. Uh, this is the boat. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Hop aboard. How long will it take to get us there in a boat like this? Well, if we take all turns rowing, it'll take a couple of hours. Well, less than six, probably. Bro, did you fall on your head? Six hours of rowing! <laughs> well, it looks like they got a wind breeze going. I don't see any rowing happening there. That's probably Lassie's doing, come to think of it. 
I call suspiciousness. That box is highly suspicious. That box. Look, Lord Persimmon, it's not suspicious at all. Hmm? Oh, don't you kids worry. Pay no mind to that crocodile. Let's be on our way. He looks more like a newt of some sort. A frilled lizard, maybe. Hey there, servant! Bring me the treasure! You can't even speak to my excellence until you've done my bidding! Pretty good equipment if I get another one. Though I don't think I've ever managed to get another 50 of these rainbow shells. This way! Follow me! But there's all this stuff to explore. Look! Rainbow shells! And a new monster! It's a horn. Wow! A bunch of new monsters, actually. Like a horned snail nautilus. Some kind of freaky puffer fish. And a surfing shark! Either that or it's a weird magic carpet. <laughs> Probably wrap up the recording soon, but let's hit this battle over with first. I don't like making too long. I'm sure it'd be boring if it lasted a half hour or more, so I try to keep it in 20 25 minutes. Oh, the bloater fish. Huh? Whistles. I guess it's supposed to be a surfing shark, not a sh or rather not such a surfing shark as it a shark with a surfboard for a tail fin. I'm fine. <laughs> Actually, no, let's not wait for that. I'll just have Chai do his bit of thing. Just defend! Stardust Rai! Whoa, that's, that's kinda weird. Shark with a surfboard for a tail! Fun, fun, and or just 
resistant, I'm sure, but... Boom! Ah, no! I'm not sure what... Does that mean it heals at the same time, too? Ah, I see. Nice. So, wait. Is that all it does? Darn. But, uh, you know, heal her. Is that the wrong... Is she the one that moved? Sorbet? Darn. You're not making us sick again. Annoying thing. You're trying to move it into the blue orbit. You're not going to do it in time. Well, I don't know why I'm bothering, but I guess just double check to make sure that this will cure everybody of sick. But yay, nonetheless. Pretty sure none of these um, status ailments affect outside of battle. Yay! Okay, that's enough excitement for today, or at least for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time, folks.